of the nice Ford. Loaded. Big black is overloaded. He's shined up. He's got too much weight on his back. first got this truck the guy that sold it to me saw me hauling cars around town and big trucks and stuff on the trailer and he said hey hey bud uh, geez um, I only built that hitch just to tow a small fishing boat and you're towing all kinds of trucks and stuff and I said well means you did a pretty good job I guess well Today's the day. Snapped her. Too much tongue weight. You can see, pretty strong, you know, three points there. I didn't really think this was doing much, but that was the weak point. Let go. Dropped down to the ground, so got three straps holding it up an hour to go to the scrapyard couldn't use the factory hitch because you know those bolt up and uh, you know brace off the bumper well with the lift gate which by the way I was told was not supposed to be installed on a half ton truck but it was so, a lot of toes, and uh, I guess this Ford's a little bit tongue heavy. I pulled it up. I pulled it up kind of further than I normally would just because the bed had a lot of weight in it and it seemed a little tail heavy. But then I proceeded to fill it up with uh, a lot of heavy iron. And I guess made it a little bit too heavy for Big Black. Just shaving off tires. Those babies, huh? Well, let's see. We got big strap. I jacked it up, you know, under the hitch so that it came back up. And uh, got this strap. We're going to both tie down points in the bed. And then I got two of these straps going right down where the safety chains go and uh, we don't have much clearance but we'll limper along your thoughts yep that's what I thought nice day Fifteen thousand. Finally, we made it. We're done. Well, I'm still gonna drive the rest of the way home, but a little bit of an adventure.
we have for our passenger show your face a little late in the day but still gotta stop still gotta get the snack close to supper time Beacon Pub Fries. Look at that. Oh, it's all worth it. It's all worth it in the end. So, big black, a little bit overloaded on the tongue there. Like I said, that guy told me, we didn't build that hitch for that. We just built it to a small boat. Well, Should have listened, I guess. Four hundred and twenty nine dollars and eighty cents just for the weight of that Ford. And then on this list for the non ferrous metals, we had two aluminum rims with tires for 16 a piece at $32 saved the two backs that had brand new tires so I'll try to sell those maybe get a few more dollars out of that uh, we had one regular car battery it was six bucks and two non car batteries which were those big marine ones they weigh those up instead of paying per battery. Um, so, 13 cents a pound, I think it says. 118 pounds. Wow, those two batteries are heavy. $15.34 for two junk deep cycle marine batteries. Not bad. And we had a grill top. Stripped a grill. Yeah, top and bottom off a grill. Five dollars ten cents. Clean mixed aluminum. It says seventeen pounds, thirty cents a pound. And then yeah. the cats. But I will tell you, a couple months ago, those cats were worth about. $350 more than they are now. And that is because cat prices are way down, obviously. And the owner of the place says they will continue to drop and not come back up anytime soon because, well, that's a prediction. Chili's perfect. It's hot. Ooh. Too hot. No spicy packet. It's only a secret thing. They say all the companies are building electric cars which don't eat cats. Obviously, 
So, the prices of the rhodium, the platinum, and the palladium that are inside the cats is not going to go up. It's going to go down because they don't need to make any more. And eventually, that'll be it. Cars won't have cats anymore. They'll all be scrapped. And they'll just be crushed. So, but hopefully, by the time that happens, I don't think I'll be around. And I won't need to make the money that I do now. And, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to live to see where everything's electric anyway. No thanks. So, there you go. Pretty good profit. Paid 300 for that truck. Uh, I spent the day going around town picking up metal and stuff at the shops and throwing it in there. Throwing stuff on the back. And uh, made it pretty heavy. Surprisingly, the four, four cats that are on those trucks on the 4.6 V8, it's a gamble on those because a lot of the times those front ones are empty. They burn out and all the material out of the front ones trickles down to the rear cats and sits in there. But you still only get paid for the two rears. So it's a good thing. Makes a huge difference there because with the price of fuel I paid to get to get it down there. Um, if it wasn't for the cats, then you can see that uh, I basically would be stupid for even doing it, because I wouldn't be making much at all. And that is why I only buy vehicles that have the factory cats on them. So, there we are. Yeah, about time for Big Black to come into the garage and uh, get some much needed love. I've been putting off and collecting some parts. I gotta do his, uh, his rear cross member. Not good. I got a bunch of parts, I got exhaust parts, exciting, I got cross members, I got cargo shocks, real nice ones, but I use it so much that it's tough to, uh, you know, put it up for even even a few days, it kind of hurts, but during the winter, it being four-wheel drive, I really need it because I go to pull these cars and stuff, these junks out of people's yards, and uh, you always need, need to click it in four-wheel for a minute or so to get out. And, you know, it can't be taking the old uh, two-wheel drive, you know, big block dually thing just uh, is totally useless in snow so didn't really make sense to uh, bring it in and, and do the work in the winter and now 
I gotta hurry up and do it because now it's gonna be hot out soon. It's already been uh, been the 70s a couple days, and besides the better fuel mileage, calling a car because I gotta go 90 miles. Remember from where I live to the junkyard. 90 miles there, 90 miles back. Besides the fuel mileage, air conditioning. So when it gets really hot, gonna need this. Not to mention a nice comfortable truck. Very nice comfortable truck to drive. Always have one nugget. A little bit of honey mustard. Rosie likes a little bit of spice in her life. Oh yeah. And uh that's that. So when I first got the truck and uh, I kind of looked at that trailer hitch setup, I was a little bit like, well, it's not great. I mean, it's not like, you know, the nicest looking thing I've ever seen, but it seemed pretty strong. And uh, that guy said that to me, kind of made me look at it again. I took a picture of it. I sent it to a couple of um, old friends of mine that, you know, are always doing stuff with trailers and stuff like that. And I was like, what do you think about this? And uh, the common response was, what's the worst that can happen? Well, after... I don't know how long I've had this thing now. A couple of years, anyway. Towed a lot of cars with it. I think I had a couple of trucks that were right around 6,000, but I think that's about... This could have could have broken the record for, for this truck. But my old car trailer, I had... Way bigger loads than that. That thing didn't care. But it's not not the trailer itself. The trailer didn't care. And actually the truck didn't have trouble pulling it at all. I mean, rolling weight, you know, nothing. Now I'm just babbling on now. But anyway, what I was getting at is I said, well, he said, we couldn't put the factory hitch on. They did give it to me. It was all rusted. I just scrapped it. But he said that, you know, obviously you couldn't put that back on with the lift gate. Now, when I bought the truck, I got that. I got the rear bumper and the tailgate. It's all, like, brand new stuff. The truck was in really nice shape. Putting a new roof on the Wendy's, that's what the noise is. So, I said, well, they got to make a hitch. That works. You know, if you have a lift gate, doesn't mean you can't tow anything. And the thing with the piece that they built, it's just a straight bar with the end on it, and you just put the ball in there. There's no slide out. There's no, so you can't change like 
your receiver, you know what I mean? You can't put like a different size ball. You gotta actually unscrew it and change it. Um, which I had to do all the time when I had my other trailer. So, another problem was where the lift gate sticks out. That hitch only comes so far. So when you hook the trailer on, you don't have that normal, you know, length of receiver that sticks out so that you have room to jackknife and maneuver the trailer. Well, so anyway, I started looking and uh, I couldn't really find much on it. So I called the company that made the lift gate and put it on. And uh, I said, hey, you put this lift gate on this truck and uh, I need a trailer hitch. I need a class three at least because I'm towing a big trailer. So what do I get? So the guy gave me a part number. Of course. He wanted to order it for me and install it and everything, but I said, well, what's involved? It's just, he's like, oh, it just bolts up. And I was like, all right, well, then I'm not paying to have it installed and do it myself. So he gave me the part number anyway, and I looked at it, and I found it online, and it was like, I think it's like 240 bucks or something like that. So, I guess that's the specific one that works, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. gets around the, the lift gate or whatever, the way it mounts. So, but when you turn it and burn it, paying the bills, making money, Don't have a lot to uh, invest in stuff like that, you know. Just got to keep going with what you got. So I kept going, and today that was it. About halfway to the yard, she broke. But could have been worse, I guess. Well, that's enough. Fries are gone. Nuggets are gone. Rosie's already sleeping. And, uh, I'm feeling sleepy myself. But, I babbled on enough. I've been told by people very close to me that when I tell a story or explain something, <clears throat> I go into too much detail. You know, the thing is, is I've always, when I'm explaining something to somebody, you know, if it's worth having a conversation about, I'm trying to, I want you to know every single detail about it, but like I said, I've been told that it's kind of annoying, and uh, I wondered why people, you know, got kind of, you could see them kind of getting bored when they'd listen to uh, something that I was talking about, and I guess, from what I'm told, that's what it is. I've been told I need to shorten up and uh, not go into every single detail. Well... choice do you got you gotta sit there and listen or you can just sit there and fast forward but whatever you decide to do if you're listening you're welcome and uh you know the thing is is that i talked to some people and i'm not talking about on the phone or anything like that or messaging i'm saying face to face talking to somebody and i tell them something 
and I go into detail and I tell them every single thing and then at the end of it they ask stupid questions that I've already answered in what I said the, all those things that now you're asking again you already heard I already said those see what I'm saying so who's wrong you know I don't know it's not even worth it but thanks for listening thanks for watching you never know you look around and all of a sudden could see me on the streets.